Hello, my name is Ben Griffin and this is the McLaren Senna and I've come to Portugal, Estoril Circuit, to see what it's like. Now Portugal has been chosen for a few reasons. One, it's a track car, this is a good track. But also this is where Ayrton Senna won his first Formula One race and it was in the rain and he was so good he actually lapped everyone except the second place racer. So that's quite impressive. Obviously this car is named after the nephew, but it's got the Senna name. It's actually quite difficult to know where to start with the McLaren Senna because quite honestly, it is madder than a bag of spiders. It has 789 brake horsepower, 800 newton meters of torque, and it weighs just 1,198 kilograms. Zero to 124 miles per hour takes 6.8 seconds, and you get 200 kilograms of downforce when you're doing 155 miles per hour. It's also incredibly expensive at a mere 750,000 pounds. That means it's actually cheaper than the McLaren P1 hypercar, but on a track and on road, the Senna is faster in just about every way. Just like the exterior of the Senna, the interior has been designed with function over form in mind. Just about everything that's necessary or useful for driving the Senna is located right in front of you, so there's no need to look anywhere else. Sitting low in the three and a half kilogram carbon fiber seat, it feels every bit like a jet fighter. This is emphasized by the fact that you start the center with a button that's above your head and even initiating track mode is done in the same place. It's all very reminiscent of the 720S and other McLaren supercars, but there are a few features that separate the center, including the fact that the buttons are chunky enough you can use them when wearing racing gloves. The exterior, meanwhile, divides opinion like nothing else, but then McLaren didn't design this car to make people go, ooh, pretty. It's there because of aerodynamics. It's there to make sure the car is stable at high speed, to stick it to the floor, to make sure that it's never anything but predictable and brutally fast. Just like in a race car, air that flows under the center is accelerated and that helps suck the car to the floor. Meanwhile, there are various channels and louvres that ensure the car is kept cool, including the new carbon ceramic brake system. Thanks to that utterly ridiculous rear spoiler, the center will actually brake from 124 miles an hour to zero in 100 meters. In fact, it will stop from 60 miles per hour in just 30 meters, which is unprecedented for a road car, and really quite painful. Ultimately then, it's pretty much irrelevant whether you like that Batmobile styling or not. Our particular test car was known as the red one, which meant it had more carbon fiber than any of the other cars on track. This is obviously a good thing, but it does come at the expense of air conditioning, and in a country that reaches 30 degrees Celsius, well, it wasn't the most comfortable. Fortunately though, you can spec it back at no extra cost, although those who live in the UK may see slightly less of a benefit in doing so. Obviously the first few laps, you are a little bit concerned about sticking a car that costs the best part of a million into a wall. But by lap three and onwards, suddenly it starts to make sense. The manual gears are sharp and snappy. The grip is absolutely sensational, and yet because the steering has so much communication, you know when to rein it in, you know when you have to get that counter steer on unless you want to face backwards. McLaren's actually made the car softer than the P1 at low speed, and it shows because it is really quite forgiving, even when you bash over the chicane curb on one of the corners at Estoril. It doesn't really unbalance the car, and you can get the power back on so, so quickly. On the flip side, when you're going fast, it's even stiffer and more stable. And of course, that inspires confidence. Confidence that's really quite useful because one of the corners, turn five if you want to be specific, is one where you don't need to lift off. And you're doing well over 100 miles per hour at that point. The 720S is by no means a slow car, as we found out because we used it to drive sighting laps before the Senna. But side by side, the difference between the two is staggering. The center is just 
that much more alive, that much faster to respond, that much quicker to react. Everything about it feels more race car than road league or supercar. Super grippy Pirelli P0 Trophy OR tyres obviously play a big role in this, but it's actually also the McLaren chassis, the way it's been tuned and set up, and the rigidity. And of course it helps the fact that the 4 litre twin turbo V8 has been tuned rather heavily compared with the one in the 720S. So while it doesn't have an electric motor and any of the hybrid gubbins you get in the P1, it is actually much quicker and of course it weighs less as well. In fact, the only McLaren that's lighter than the Senna is the F1. Now usually McLarens aren't the best sounding supercars on the planet, but the Senna, well let's just say that reworked exhaust system creates a glorious sound. When the Senna goes past at 180 miles per hour on Estoril Strait, it sounds like an F22. It really is epic. Also likeable is just how potent the engine is because you get pretty much all torque from very low down. So if you want to be lazy with the gears, you can because it's still going to be incredibly fast. But if you want to ring out every mile per hour, and to be fair, we did, it feels good, it sounds good, it's involving, it's enthralling, it's dramatic. But if there's one area that is the most impressive of all of them, it's the braking. As we said earlier, you're doing about 180 miles per hour before a fairly unforgiving right-hander, and mentally, you want to brake quite early. You want to brake at the 300 mark, the 250 meter mark, but actually you can keep going. By the second session, we are braking between 150 and 100 meters before the corner, and the braking power is astonishing. And when we finally timed it right, and there was no wasted speed, and we entered the corner pretty much on the limit, it felt amazing, genuinely amazing. I felt for a second like a race car driver. Some people may find the slightly forgiving edge an issue, but then if it is, you may as well buy a Caterham, or a Westfield, or an Aerial Atom. For me, the best bit about the Senna is that you can get in without being that good a driver, and it excites, but actually it will also slightly hold your hand. And yet when you really, really start pushing and you hold second for a corner instead of third, you need to be precise because otherwise you're going to crash. You're going to go off into the grass or the gravel or into a wall. And that's why it's so exciting and so enthralling because it helps ease everyone in, but actually to get the best from it takes a lot of practice. And it's practice you're willing to give. I did not want to get out of the car at the end of the day. I could have been there day, night, lapping it up just trying to shave off every little second. And that's incredible because this isn't even the GTR version, that is coming as well. So if you want a non-road legal, even more batshit mental version, you can buy that. Although saying that, they're only going to build 75 and like the Senna, they're all sold. <laughs> And that brings me on nicely to the biggest problem with the Senna, because actually you can't buy it. Maybe someone will be willing to give it up, but based on how good it is, I wouldn't hold your breath. As a road car, this is the absolute pinnacle. I don't think there is any other supercar that is as honed, that is as fast and as capable. Maybe it's too much for the road, but ultimately we didn't get a chance to give that a go, so I cannot tell you what the Senna's like over a pothole. But I can tell you what Estoril, it is absolutely sensational. Quite honestly, I have driven very few cars that are as memorable as the Senna. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe, like, comment below, and of course click that little bell button, because then you'll be notified when another video lands. And there are many on the way, so stay tuned guys, thanks for watching.